In Europe, a car clocks up 75% of its mileage in an urban environment. The result? An explosive cocktail of congestion and pollution. Time wasted in traffic jams could soon be costing the European Union 1% of its gross domestic product. Urban traffic is responsible for 40% of CO2 emissions generated by road transport, and 9 in every 10 Europeans are exposed to harmful particle emissions that are higher than the tolerated threshold. However, the European Commissioner for Transport believes that an alternative and more environmentally friendly urban mobility can be achieved through well-targeted actions. We first of all need to promote new fuels and in particular bioenergy in the field of transport. The Biofuel Directive lays down that biofuel must replace 5.75% of the fossil fuels used for transport. Then you have the far-reaching research and development program. This is hinged in part on these new green propulsion methods. I've also proposed to the European public authorities that at least a quarter of new commercial vehicles purchased to renew fleets be clean vehicles. There really is a clear determination within the Union to advocate the use of much cleaner vehicles, electric vehicles, hydrogen vehicles and mixed propulsion vehicles. As far as urban transport is concerned, in addition to the financing of equipment and infrastructures, in particular in the new member states, the European Union is backing projects that aim to replace petrol with clean alternatives. Take the example of Lille in northern France. The city has something of a reputation as a pioneer in the field of sustainable and more efficient transport. It was the first in the world to build a totally automatic high-frequency light railway system. Today, this system carries almost 80 million passengers a year. For the past 10 years, the urban community of Lille has been working on yet another new solution, the biogas bus. Biogas is made from organic waste or the sludge of sewage treatment plants using naturally produced gas that is then purified for use as a fuel for buses. The purification process in question is an innovation. It makes it possible to convert the biogas produced by the fermentation of organic waste to obtain the same level of quality as natural gas. The buses can therefore run on one or the other, which offers a solid guarantee of supply. It's not more expensive to run a bus on gas than it is on diesel, as far as the price per kilometer is concerned, which means that on the whole it doesn't cost the city more to use gas-operated vehicles. It's a real win-win situation. We're protecting the environment without having to dig deeper into our pockets. Once the development phase was over, the city's projects gathered momentum with the acquisition of new gas-operated buses and the construction of an adapted bus depot. Each parking space is equipped with a recharging socket. When they return to the depot after their round, it only takes a minute for the drivers to plug their vehicle into the automatic distribution network. At present, we have just over 200 gas-operated buses, 214 to be exact, of a total fleet of 330, therefore around two-thirds. The aim is to make the entire fleet run on gas and to only have gas-operated vehicles. And so as not to waste this great idea only on the buses, the city now has plans to make its dustbin lorries run on gas. Let's now head for Graz in Austria. Next time you're passing through, don't forget to taste the local speciality, the schnitzel, with a generous helping of chips. You may not be aware of it, but you'll be doing your bit to save the planet. As you take your digestive walk, though, you may be struck by a strange slogan written on the side of the buses. Von der Pfanne in den Tank. From the pan into the tank. It refers to the fact that we run our buses on waste oil, which means that the waste vegetable oil from restaurants and homes goes from the pan into the tanks. In other words, waste vegetable oils are transformed into biodiesel. 
For example, in Graz, once the cooking oil of your schnitzel has been used, it's no longer thrown down the drain. A collection lorry comes by to recover it and to take it to a factory where it will be transformed into biodiesel, that's to say of non-fossil origin, before being reused in the bus tanks. Our entire bus fleet runs on 100% biodiesel. In other words, we no longer need fossil fuel to run our fleet. To keep our entire fleet running, that's to say 130 buses, we use 3.8 million litres a year. Of course, the oil that is recovered from restaurants is not enough to operate all the buses throughout the year. Biodiesel comes mainly from colza and sunflower crops. As the director of this engineering firm that designs production units explains, biodiesel can be obtained from a large number of raw materials that are readily available. The raw materials are everywhere, on our very doorstep. They're all around us, whether colza oil, sunflower oil, waste oils or animal fats. I usually say that as long as we eat meat or schnitzels or steak, we'll have animal fat, which, by the way, is an excellent raw material for biodiesel. Another good piece of news. The equivalent of biodiesel exists for petrol. This is bioethanol and is produced using plants that Europeans grow in large quantities, such as sugar beet or wheat. The European Directive has given a serious boost to the use of these biodiesels. In Graz, for example, one taxi company runs its 200 cars exclusively on biodiesel. This takes us to the third stop on our travels, to London. The British capital is one of the most polluted cities in Europe. One of the culprits, the frenzied vehicle traffic. Here again, the solution could come in part from the famous red buses, or at least from this bus in particular. At present, only three of them actually run in the city. At first glance, they don't appear to be any different to the others. But if you take a closer look around the back, what you could mistake for exhaust fumes is nothing more than a plume of water steam. London is in fact one of the European cities that is testing the hydrogen bus on its network within the framework of a European research program. Nine cities uh, were selected to participate. 